Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's reflection on the 2023-2024 um, URC season. The league that was given three years by uh, Stephen Jones, the uh, very notorious English journalist, uh, and before it collapsed and uh, faded into nothing, is just capped off, for me, the best ever season we've seen from the URC. And a season and a final and drama and a, a top eight, a playoffs qualification, which shows just why the URC is one of the best leagues in the world, if not arguably one of the, the if not the best with regards to entertainment factor. Um, Because it's been another fantastic league um, season. And I think that we are looking at a league which is still so young and in its infancy and yet providing everything you could possibly want out of a, a, a rugby league or a rugby competition, rugby tournament. And we're going to be talking about that, exactly why, what makes it so special and why is there so much reason to be excited about it. Before you do that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Glasgow Warriors becoming champions last night. The third different champion in uh, as many years and uh, the third different, uh, sorry, second different venue. Um, but um, the main thing for me is you never know who's going to win. And the fact of the matter is, and I don't want to sort of become a harping on about one team. The side that was supposed to have dominated the URC, supposed to be the side that everybody measures up to in Leinster, have not won the URC yet. Three seasons they've tried, three seasons they failed. And uh, every single time, I think, each season, I think we've looked at teams who we think are going to win the, the league or potentially be league winners. And almost every single time, that team, or the team that has won, has not been part of that conversation. And, and I'll include Glasgow Warriors in that because I don't think anybody looked at Glasgow Warriors and thought, those are going to be our champions. I don't. You know, I, tr I truly don't. I think you look at last season, for example, um, you know, Glasgow Warriors finished fourth, as, same, same as as, um, as this season, but uh, went out in the uh, quarterfinals by being beaten by Munster, who were eventually the champions. If you look back at the initial season, for example, this Glasgow Warriors side uh, came eighth, only just making the playoffs. Once again, went out into the quarters where they were hammered 76 points to 14 by Leinster. From that, two seasons later, they have beaten the Bulls away, a week after beating Munster, away to be crowned URC champions. And it's more than just the Glasgow Warriors win for me, which is why I think this URC is so special. Um, but for me, that is a perfect testament of just what we want in the league. If you're looking at any sort of tournament or if you're looking at any sort of league or anything like that, what are some of the things you want? You want upsets. You want competition. You want a close standard um, or, or, or sort of close competitiveness across all the teams, and you want a high standard of rugby. The URC delivers all of this and more. It really does. I mean, you look at the top eight race from this season, for example, and, uh, you know, three teams within one point, or two teams within, I mean, Lions, equal on points with Ospreys, should have been finished eight. Didn't go through by a number of victories. Edinburgh, on the final day of the, the league season, one point behind um, being in that top eight. Connacht Rugby, five points behind Ospreys. So we're talking about 11 teams who basically were competing for um, those top eight spots. If you look at the difference between, for example, sixth and 11th, less than 10 points. You know, that's how close this league season was. It went down to the final day where at one stage, you know, the Lions were in the playoffs. Then they were out the playoffs. Ospreys, two or three weeks before the, 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 the quarterfinals, weren't even in contention to be in the quarterfinal. They got there. You know, also what you want to see in a league that is sort of cross, uh, across, across nations, stuff like that, you want to see the different nations all competing and not just dominated by one nation. This year, for example, two South African teams in the top eight, three Irish sides, an Italian side, a Scottish side, and a Welsh side. So all of the nations represent in that top eight. And... Um, Three nations represented in the top four. And the big thing is, is that once again, for the third time in a row, the number one spot in the league did not go on to win the league, which shows you that um, whilst home support, for example, and, and finishing number one is incredibly important, it is not the be-all and end-all because we have seen shocks in the URC. We have seen the Bulls going over to Ireland and beating Leinster in that first season, for example, then beating them at home. Last season, for example, Munster edging Leinster 15 points to 16 a huge victory away and then coming down to South Africa and beating the Stormers in the final Stormers who 
um, beat the Bulls in the quarterfinals and uh, beat Connacht very easily in the semifinals. Uh, so we've seen really, really good playoffs. We've seen really interesting few seasons. And I think for me, what's been really cool to see is the progression of certain teams. You know, you look at 21-22 uh, at, at, at as a Lions fan, where the Lions fan finished uh, 12th with 41 points, nowhere near um, the, the, the playoffs, for example. Season 2 for the Lions. Um, and they all of a sudden progressed up to 45, just three points behind uh, the playoffs. And then this season, finishing tied eighth, but back on, on, on number points. Things are getting better. Teams are becoming more competitive. Zebra, for example, if we look at the first season of, uh, of the URC, they finished with nine points with just one win. In the second season, Zebra, who continue to be the wooden spoon kind of team, uh, 11 points, no victories, by the way, no draw. Those are also losing bonus points. This past season, a win and a draw, 15 points. So the bottom teams are getting better. They are taking more and more points every season, which is what you want to see. You don't want to see uh, a bottom sort of three that have got you know three, four points across the entire season. Um, so things are definitely getting better from that perspective. And I think that what makes this league so cool is there's not a lot separating the, the teams and it's, and it's becoming less and less. Last year, Leinster walked the table with 11 points. Uh, Ulster were then tied second with uh, Stormers, five points ahead of them with Glasgow Warriors, uh, eight points ahead. It was, it was, there was gaps between all the various different teams. This past season was absolutely mental when you think that Munster was number one spot on the league by just two points, Bulls two points behind them, Leinster one point behind them, actually tied with Glasgow Warriors. That's how close the top four was. And then if you look at the bottom four, well, the next four, five through to eight, 59 points for the Stormers, 54 for Ulster, 54 for Benton, 50. This league is a league where anybody from 11 to 1 can win on the game on the day. That's how close this past season was. And we're talking about a season where the Sharks, who were the Challenge Cup winners, didn't feature. So I think we're talking about one of the most competitive leagues in the world with regards to there being so little difference between some of the teams. And, you know, Jake White, yesterday in his, his press conference, and I get a bit frustrated about it, talks about how, you know, he doesn't have the same resources as a Leinster and a Glasgow, you know, in terms of the international talent, which... Is part is true in terms of the number of international inverted commas. But you look at the Glasgow Warriors, and yes, they've got lots of Scottish international players, but they're not exactly a stacked side with all these massive sort of superstars, for example. Um, you know, a lot of the, the best Scottish players, as we've seen over the years, the likes of a you know Stuart Hogg, a Finn Russell, um, a lot of them play their rugby outside of Scotland. You know, John van der has come back and playing for Edinburgh. So, you know, it's not like a, a, a Blake Kingwood playing his rugby for, for Toulouse. It's not like Glasgow Warriors are this incredibly stacked side. They've got all these other international players like an Archeus Neyman for Leinster, for example. Um, like, we, I mean, for, for Munster now, Leinster next season. Jordi Barry going to Leinster next season. Um, so I don't think that it is necessarily a side of, of absolute superstars. It's a side of a lot of good Scottish players, but it shows you how Scottish rugby is growing. And this win for Glasgow Warriors will grow um, Scottish rugby. You look at this, I look at the tables, and I look at the growth of, of Benton, for example, um, who are getting better and better every season. Yes, they won the Rainbow Cup a few years ago, but, you know, a very different format. But there's no doubt, for example, that Scotland rugby is benefiting from the URC. Italian rugby is benefiting from the URC. South African rugby, I 100% believe we are benefiting from the URC. And I think a lot of the Irish fans will agree that they're benefiting from the URC. So the only nation at the moment which isn't benefiting from the urc at the moment is Wales, and only because they're just not benefiting from anything because they're in absolute shambles you know we're seeing big crowds a sold out final last year two years ago as well a sold out final we're selling tickets they they are breaking tv records i don't look at the urc and see anything which points to it being a potential problem something that's not sustainable i genuinely think the product we've had delivered to us the last few seasons has been absolutely sensational um, I'm a massive advocate for it. Obviously, from a safe perspective, it'll be nice when we start to get uh, revenue from it and start to really be able to afford to compete properly in terms of travel arrangements. Hopefully, you know, be able to keep more players, especially from a line perspective, be able to maybe look at, at uh, a couple of marquee players. But um, I've, I've really enjoyed all, all three seasons. I've, I've enjoyed all three finals, for example. I've enjoyed the playoffs. I've enjoyed, you know, the, 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 some of the traveling. It's been so, so much more accessible from a time point of view. And uh, I think South Africa completely struck gold. And you look at now New Zealand, talk about how much they miss the South African teams. Um, we're far more competitive in the URC than we are in the Super Rugby. And that's not to say that we weren't good enough in the Super Rugby, but I think that things have maybe stagnated a bit in South African Rugby, a lot of issues there. And um, 
I don't think the standard of the URC is any, any, any weaker than Super Rugby. I mean, this year in particular, you see the very weird Super Rugby with Crusaders, for example, dropping off. The Blues were incredibly dominant. But I think that we're playing a, a different style of rugby, for example, which tends to be a bit closer. It tends to be a bit more sort of, almost a bit more sort of test match-like in terms of it being a very tactical-based, very condition-based, as opposed to Super Rugby, which, you know, was was was, was a high-scoring league. It was a league where you used to throw the ball around. And it was maybe exciting. Um, is it more exciting? I suppose it depends on what you like. But I really enjoy the fact that on nine times out of ten, I can turn on the TV and when I'm watching uh, an Ospreys taking on an Ulster, it's a close game. When I turn on and watch Cardiff taking on Benson, it can be a close game. And I think that's a very exciting part of the URC. So I'm a big fan. Are you? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.